Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I've got another product review for here on the channel today. This time around, I'm checking out a new USB Type-C power delivery charger from Koval. This is rated at up to 120 watts, which is quite high. And it's basically the cutting edge of what's available from the power delivery spec today. But this review is actually gonna be a little bit of a how-to as well about Type-C power delivery, where it's been and where it's going because it's changing pretty quickly. I'm also gonna be talking about cables because while we may all be familiar with USB cables from many years of using them, Type-C is a very quickly changing standard because Type-C has become not just a data transmission technology, but also a power delivery technology there's a lot more you need to keep track of when you go out to buy a cable. Are you buying the cable just to charge? Are you buying the cable just for data transmission? Are you buying it for both? Because you're gonna to have to pay attention to the spec of that cable for both of those parameters if you care about both of them. The other thing I'll mention is that my interest in this technology dates back to 2019 when I tested this Anchor 60 watt power delivery charger, one of the first based on gallium nitride technology and definitely one of the first 60 watt capable models out there. I found that there were a lot of limitations to this charger back then and some of those persist today in chargers that are rated for 60, 100, 120 watts. So I will be talking about that when I get into my benchmarking of this charger to see what it can do in terms of charging some of the products I have on hand. The other thing I wanna mention is that in our common lingo, we talk about these devices as battery chargers, but technically they are just external power supplies, not that different from the external power supply we may use in our laptops. And in fact, a lot of these are now marketed as replacements for those big bulky boxes that you got with those laptops. And so it's a little bit odd that we call them chargers when in reality, they are doing the same function that those big breakout boxes did in the past. They are just power supplies for a laptop, a cell phone, a tablet, and so many other devices. They aren't technically chargers because the chargers are on board those devices. Now let's talk a little bit more about the USB Type-C standard. Of course, Type-C refers to a plug, a shape, kind of something that we're familiar with but Type-C power delivery actually refers to a different specification set by the USB Implementers Forum, or USB-IF. And the power delivery spec started at 60 watts about three or four years ago, and then quickly ramped up to 100 watts. So 100 watts is the current spec, and that's where this Koval charger, or external power supply, sits, although they rate it at 120 watts, and I'll get more into that. That's not an official spec by the USB-IF. Interestingly, in May of 2021, the USB-IF published a specification, or a draft, of something that they're referring to as their 240 watt specification. Now that's gonna take the power output up way higher than 100 watts by increasing the voltage. So to get to 100 watts, you use five amps at 20 volts. To get to 240 watts, they're gonna go up to 48 volts. Now that's not existing yet, but you can look for that in the future. So there'll be external power supplies shaped like this or this, they can potentially hit 240 watts, although they may be pretty large. The other thing I want to make clear is that the cable is extremely important. It's not enough to say, hey, I've got the type C cable. Now you have to look at the specifications of those cables because the initial round of power delivery capable cables were rated to just 60 watts. And the vast majority of cables on the market today are still tied to that specification. They're limited to three amps and 20 volts. That's 60 watts. So they would work great with this anchor charger or power supply that was released in 2019 that I reviewed in 2019. But they will not work with this model from Koval. They cannot support 100 watts. So you will definitely wanna look at the specifications of your cables if you are interested in power delivery and you wanna hit the highest current specification of 100 watts. So interestingly, this model of cable that I bought from Cable Matters, which is a brand I really trust, they are definitely always ahead of the curve. This is a 100 watt rated cable I bought in 2019 before there were any 100 watt power supplies. And again, Cable Matters is definitely ahead of the curve. They don't have anything rated 240 watts, that's for sure. But you can find a lot of cables from Cable Matters that are rated lower than 100 watts. So if you see something branded as USB 3.2 Gen 2, well, that doesn't necessarily tell you that it's going to provide the power delivery limit that you are looking for. So definitely pay attention. There are actually a huge number of cables currently on the market being sold 
that are specific for power delivery. And that's okay, but that means that to get the price down, they actually go back to USB 2.0, meaning they're limited to 480 megabits per second, very slow data transport speeds. You would never want to use that in your typical type C port on a laptop or desktop or phone because it's going to slow down your data transmission so much. These are basically charging cables, even though they are USB cables. You don't want to use them for data. And that's where the kind of intersection between the power delivery and data transport functions of USB can cause confusion among consumers. And that's why I decided to take on a review of this Coval power supply at this point. I found it to be a really good opportunity to give my viewers and all the folks out there interested in power delivery sort of quick primer on what the current status of power delivery is and where things are going and the kind of things you should be looking for if you want to get the most out of the latest and greatest power delivery products. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at this Koval Charging Mate charger and then get into the benchmarks. So first off, the Koval Charging Mate is pretty decent in terms of size, fitting easily into the hand, although it does become a bit bulkier when you attach the required power cable. And of course, you'll need a USB Type-C cable as well, which is not included. Even then, it's not bad compared to the size of, say, this standard Dell charger that came with my Dell laptop. And likewise, looks about the same size as this Anker 60 watt two port model. But when it comes to weight, which will be really important to anyone who travels with their charger, the Koval isn't very impressive. It's 443 grams, almost a full pound with a Type-C cable attached. That compares to just 283 grams for the standard Dell Type-C charger and a very lightweight 221 grams for the Anker 60 watt model with the same Type-C cable attached. So while you get twice the output at 120 watts, you also have more than twice the weight. But let's talk more about that power output. I'm going to use my Trickle Star Energy Monitor to show you exactly what the Koval can do. So here the Koval Charging Mate is connected to a Dell laptop in charging mode using a 100 watt capable Type-C cable. And we see that the Koval is pulling around 70 watts from the wall. So that means it's delivering just a little bit less than that. Now, compared to the standard Dell charger, it's quite a bit higher. I didn't see this charger really exceed more than around 40 watts while charging. So it is not as capable as the Koval. Keep in mind though, that to get that power out of the Koval, you need the right cable. So here paired with a 60 watt Type-C cable, we see that it maxes out around 60 watts, not that surprising. So again, there is going to be a big difference in the total output based on the cable. Although either way, the Koval was ahead of the anchor, which was only able to output around 40 watts using a 100 watt rated cable, as you can see here. But what really distinguishes the Koval Charging Mate is its ability to charge two high drain devices like this Dell laptop next to my LG laptop. Now, the LG laptop only pulls about 45 watts at peak. So what you're seeing here is more or less 45 watts from that laptop and maybe 50 watts from the Dell. So you have a total of around 95 watts. And I should note that when you're using the two USB-C ports, they are limited to 60 watts each. So even if this Dell could actually pull more than 60 watts, it's not going to in this configuration, but 60 watts is quite sufficient for charging a laptop of this nature. So here you see the two USB-C ports used on the Koval. What's perhaps interesting about the rating of the Koval is that it's 120 watts. And the way that Koval gets to that is adding the four ports. So here I have two phones and two laptops charging. And together, the four devices hit around 105 watts from the wall. So that's more or less about 100 watts being delivered by the Koval Charging Mate. But wait, there's actually a warning on my Dell laptop indicating that I have a slow charger connected. How could that be when we saw it working fine before? Well, the reality is that the way that the power delivery is split on the Koval, once you connect just one type A device, you lose the optimal power rating. So it's only able to deliver 60 watts per type C if you have nothing else being used. Connect even a single type A and your two type C ports drop down to 45 watts. Another thing to note 
is that the Koval is just not a particularly good power supply for a phone. Here, even these very powerful Type-C ports only deliver 12 watts. That's the same that you'll get from the USB Type-A ports. So overall, the two scenarios where I think this Koval Charging Mate is really ideal is for two laptops and nothing else, charging at 60 watts each, or a high drain laptop, like a 100 watt laptop. There are only a few of those out there at the moment, plus one other device on a type A port, like a phone or tablet. So then you'd get to the 120 watts or so maximum rating. Now, if you have any comments or questions about the video, definitely post them down below. If you enjoyed it, please give me a like and subscribe. And as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I will catch you next time.